Good morning. When Jesus asked his father, why have you forsaken me? What was his answer? Today we're looking at Mark 15, verses 33 to 37. Now when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood by when they heard that said, Look, he is calling for Elijah. Then someone ran and filled a sponge full of sour wine, put it on a reed, and offered it to him to drink, saying, Let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to take him down. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. So this is the death of Jesus on the cross. God gave no answer. Jesus was utterly alone. He felt utterly alone. He was dying on the cross for your sins and mine. Of course, he wasn't utterly alone because God is everywhere present all the time. But he was not allowed to sense or feel the presence of his Father. And he felt on the cross totally derelict, totally abandoned. Never in all eternity had Jesus felt that way. But this was what he was feeling. And it must have been an extraordinary thing. He's dying in our place for our sins. And although he was innocent, we are guilty. And so because of that, he's taking our punishment. To understand what Jesus is feeling, go back to Psalm 22 and read that. That'll blow your mind. That will help you understand what it was like for Jesus in some small way, what it was like on the cross. There's a crowd here watching, listening, watching what's going on, and there's some, some people in the mix here who, who are doing what? They're, they're kind of tuning in to try to understand it, and they're, they're, they don't really understand what's going on. But they're saying, hey, maybe Elijah will come and take him down. Let's watch. So they're watching the show. But this was the whole point. There was no one to deliver Jesus. Jesus does die here on the cross for your sins and mine, all of them. So Jesus is paying the full penalty for our choice to rebel, our choice is to rebel, and re giving us in return his right doing, his good things that he did, his righteousness. He is exchanging his perfect sinless life for our self-serving, self-indulgent self lives and rebellion in sin. And so he breathes his last and he dies utterly alone on the cross. He gives his goodness in exchange for our badness. And now all who are willing will be able to receive his goodness into our lives. I mean, what? There's no words for this. And he offers this transaction to every person, even to those who are crucifying him right here. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for watching over us. Thank you for bringing us to the cross this morning. I mean, literally here in the, the climax of the gospel of Mark is upon us. Jesus, Lord, you gave him to us at, this, at the cross. Help us to receive the gift of eternal life. It was paid for at such, such an expense, Lord. Help us to have some sense of appreciation and thanksgiving, Lord. Help us to respond with all the love you can put in us and be true to you, to be faithful to Jesus. Lord, this is our, our prayer today. As we see Jesus crucified before us on the cross. Oh, Lord, thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a development we need to think about, pray about, and thank God for. After all, we, we never earn this, and we can't earn this. This is a gift from a loving God to us, to people who have rebelled against his goodness but are willing and ready to return. God be with you today, this beautiful day that God has given us. If you're appreciating the material on this channel, go ahead and subscribe or put a like in there. Do something like that so this can rise up in the search rankings because we want other people to be drawn to Jesus' heart uh, through his word. You know what to do.